Hollywood usually tries to work with actors who have been in big television series or movies after they have achieved great success. Some actors become superstars, while others quickly disappear. Today, I will share a little story about one of these actors. Taylor Kitsch started his career with small roles in various television series. He starred in teen comedies like John Tucker Must Die in recent roles. But as success did not bring these roles, he had to try out again in any series or a low-budget horror film. Such a film was The Covenant, 2006, directed by Rennie Harlan. The film is considered quite garbage and even a bit of a disgrace. Kitsch after such a movie could have disappeared from the radar of producers and directors. But he starred in the television series Friday Night Lights. The first three seasons of the project were very popular on American television and even set several records relating to ratings. Thanks to the show came just a few young actors who later paid attention. Really tried to take off was Kitsch in general. It is not surprising that the audience liked it because he got the role of Clearly advantageous against other actors playing a drunk. Everyone knows that the alcoholic in the movie is just plus 100 to the charisma. So the success of Kitsch in the series, where he plays a drunkard, was predictable. Become a big star Kitsch tried while still tied to a contract series. He got the role of Gambit movie X-Men Origins Wolverine. Here actor a little luck. Gambit was to play Channing Tatum. But because of his busy schedule and the desire of Fox Studios to shoot a movie as soon as possible, Channing refused the project, and Taylor Kitsch was quickly signed as his replacement. It did not work out to become a star. The stars did not align in the sky. X-Men Origins, Wolverine was a very expensive film, but ran into many problems at once on release. First, just before the premiere, the web leaked the version of the movie without a part of the visual effects well. And when the picture hit the big screens, Western viewers met it very cold. The 150 million project in cinemas has collected $373 million. The studio was so disappointed that the next Wolverine movie lost a lot of budget from the first film. They quickly tried to forget about Gambit, even though audiences generally greeted Kitsch quite well. Still, the studio preferred to pretend nothing had happened and re-signed Channing Tatum to play the character in a solo movie. Still, the project went to production hell and eventually never took place. In the same year, Kitsch was another indie drama, which was to go to different awards according to the plan. But critics did not like the movie, and Taylor returned to the television series, where he binged until its closure due to low ratings in 2011. But immediately after the series, he had an incredible chance to become a superstar in just one year. In 2012, the actor came out in the rental of three expensive films, two of which had a budget of over $200 million, and he was in them in the lead role. First hit cinema's screen to $150 million John Carter at the start of the hire of a large-scale project was not even able to take. First place at the end of the week giving way to the animated film The Lorax, which at the box office. The Lorax, which was already in its second week at the American box office. The film managed to collect a ridiculous for the rest of the world brought in another $211 million. They were not able to the total box office collections of the project amounted to only $284 million. The money spent on the production of the film studio Disney needed to be $500 million. If you remember the marketing costs, which in such films are rarely below 100 million. The yield in the plus would have occurred at John Carter only if we overcome the mark of 650 million. John Carter remains the most impressive failure of Disney Studios in its history. Because of this happened, many resignations from the head of the studio left Rich Ross. Disney irrevocably lost between 200 and 250 million dollars at the most conservative estimate studio. It seems that such an epic fail may end the careers of many actors. But Battleship, which was released two months after John Carter, that is John Carter in cinemas around the world, still, continued to sink in, and here comes a new blockbuster with Taylor Kitsch. Battleship, at the box office, also managed to hit the Avengers. Everyone knew that the Avengers would be successful, 
So director Peter Berg's film was released three weeks later. But no one expected The Avengers to be such a success. It managed to collect $1.5 billion at the box office. It was a crazy success. Battleship could have made a little more if it had come out later. The 209 million Battleship couldn't keep up with the Avengers and only made 303 million. All in all, Battleship's failure rate is comparable to John Carter's only because the budget of this film was taken over by several studios at the same time. In the end, they all lost not that much money. On the other hand, it is argued that the film's failure strongly hit the sales of board games company Hasbro, which covered part of the film's budget and produced just a board game, Battleship. By the way, the movie was directed by Peter Berg, who made the rundown in Hancock. He's the director of the Friday Night Lights series from which Taylor Kitsch emerged. Taylor closed 2012 by failing with the film Especially Dangerous, invited him to. Oliver Stone personally invited him to this project. The director was present on the battleship set and was very impressed with the actor's dedication to the set. The box office here is not as deplorable as in previous paintings. 45 million projects have collected $83 million in perspective from the sale of rights to television and media tape should go in the but in 2012, Kitsch this fact was not easier. He managed to sink just three films in a row. And the total loss that the studio received from the rental of movies could well pass the mark of $500 million. While the screens were sinking, all of these blockbusters, Taylor managed to sign on for one of the main roles in the movie The Grand Seduction. Plus, Peter Berg has invited him to the movie Lone Survivor. But The Grand Seduction went unnoticed in 2013 and Lone Survivor, although not bad at the box office. Almost nobody noticed Kitsch. In 2014, he only popped up in one television project, The Normal Heart, where everyone but him was noticed again. The actor said that he had not received any offers for almost a year before he was invited to the second season of True Detective, and was quietly drinking in his apartment. Taylor is probably cheating about any offers to star in any powerful Bruce Willis movie he clearly received. Still, a star in such films does not want everyone because they generally mean the end of the career. Season 2 of True Detective was a lifesaver for Kitsch. Getting into wide release, he started getting called up. The actor starred in Only the Brave, American Assassin, and 21 Bridges. None of these films was successful and now the actor's career is back in a deep hole. He tried to star in the French-Canadian series Shadow Play, but the success of this project was bypassed. Taylor is now trying to launch Pieces, a film in which he is to play the lead role and take on the role of director. The script for the film, which he also wrote personally to help him with the film, volunteered the same Peter Berg, who acts as a producer on the tape. He also had a rough go of it in recent years, failing with Deepwater Horizon, Mile 22 and Patriot's Day. And eventually, along with another friend, went on to Netflix and Spencer Confidential. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel.